Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the pagination functionality in Flask SQL Alchemy. And to do this, I'll show you how it works on the Python console first, or the Python REPL. And then after that, I'll create a really basic app with one route that will show you how the pagination can work and how you can create like links to the next page. So of course, like always, this will make more sense once I show you. So I'll get into that in a moment. Before I do, I wanna show you my Flask cheat sheet if you don't already have it. It is a good way to learn some of the common things that you will use in Flask when you're writing your apps. So if you wanna download this cheat sheet, it's a PDF. Just go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet, all one word, or you can go to the link down in the description below to get this cheat sheet. So what I have so far is the very basics of an app. I have a database created already. There's nothing in it. And then I have SQL Alchemy instantiated. So what I'll do is I'll create a really simple table. So I'll call this thread. And this will represent something like a threads on a form app. So it inherits DB model. And then I'll have an ID. So it's an integer column and then it will be a primary key. And then I'll have one other column. I'll call this title. So it will represent the thread title. So this will be a string and let's just say 50 characters. So with this, what I'll do is I'll start the Python REPL and import, let's see, from app import DB and thread. So what I'll do first is I'll create the database tables. And then what I'll do is I'll create a bunch of rows in this thread table that I just created. So what I'll do is let's say four I in range one to 201. So I get 200 items. What I'll do is thread equals thread and then title will be thread and I'll simply add the number. So stir of I will give me like thread one, thread two, thread three, and so on. So DB session add thread. And then DB session commit. So when I do thread query count, I should get 200, which I do. And if I do, th let's say threads, goes thread query all, and I look at say element 24 and get the title of it then I get thread 25 so everything is working well so far so instead of doing all what I want to do is I want to paginate the results so if I did all I'm going to get all 200 results at once but if I use pagination then I can get as many results as I want per page so let's say I wanted 10 results per page then with 200 results total I'd have 20 pages and I'd be able to go through 20 individual pages and get the results for each page. So to do that is actually fairly straightforward. Instead of doing something like thread query, and then you know your filters or whatever, instead of fil or instead of all at the end, so that will give me everything, I'll simply call paginate. And when I do that, I get a pagination object in return. So with this pagination object, I can then see results for just one page. So by default, this pagination object starts on page one and it gives you 20 results per page. So if I create a variable called pages and I'll put this back in there, so paginate. If I do pages dot pages, probably not the best name, so let me change that to threads. So thread dot query paginate and then thread dot pages. That tells me the number of pages in my pagination object. So in this case, it's 10. If I want to know what page I'm on, I can do threads.page. It tells me I'm on page one. And I have the docs open here. So with the pagination object, there are a few different things I can call. So for instance, has next and has previous, that will tell me if there's a next page or a previous page. So I'll demonstrate that. So threads.has next, that should be true. But threads has previous, so P-R-E-V, that should be false because I'm on page one. And that is right. And then uh, items will be the actual items on that page. So for example, on page one, I'll have threads one through 20. So just to give you an example of that, if I do threads.items, 
and then let's say element four, that should give me, and then title, that should give me thread five because it's the index four in the items array. And this list of items is only 20 because there are 20 items per page. Either pages, I'll get to that later, but that's used to kind of create those pagination links that you see on so many different sites. Next, we'll give you the next pagination object for whatever page you are on. So if you're on page one and you hit next, then it will give you page two. If you're on page five and you do next, it will give you page six. Next num will give you the actual number of the next page. So in this case, threads.nextNum should be two, in which it is. Page, I already showed you that. That gives you the current page number. Pages gives you the total number of pages. In this case, it is 20, or 10 actually, because there are 20 items per page. Per page, I'll show you that. That will just tell you how many are on each page. In this case, is 20. And then previous is analogous to next, where it gives you the previous pagination object. In this case, there is no previous because I'm already on page one. Previous num is similar. It gives you the number of the previous page. Query is basically what query is used to create the page. And then total is the number of items matching the query in total. So total is 200 because I have 200 items as a result of that one query that I read, thread.query, and then paginate. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the pagination object. Uh, when you do call a pagination, you can specify how many pages you want or how many items per page and what page you want. So if I do this again and I say threads equals thread query paginate, and instead of saying I don't want any additional arguments, I will say per page will be 15, and then I want to start on page, let's say, 4. So then I see threads.page, I'm on page four. Thread, threads.nextNum should be five, and then previous num would be three because I'm on page four. And of course, if I look at the items, then I'll have 15 items instead of 10. And, if, and I have the same 200 items from the query because I don't have any filters. So the last thing I want to show you is how the Either pages works, and this will make more sense once I show you because it's kind of hard to demonstrate uh, through the REPL. So what I'll say is, all pages equals see threads dot pages, and this returns a generator. And what I'll do is I'll loop over this generator. So I'll say for i in all pages, print i. So this shouldn't have the, this shouldn't have the uh, parentheses, so I'll remove that. For i in all pages, print i. And what we see here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then none, and then 13, 14. So what this is doing is it's kind of taking the current page number and getting the items before it and after it. And if there are too many after, then it won't show them. And just like if there are too many before, it won't show them. And it will show the last two at the end, and it shows the first two in the beginning if I don't have enough after the first two. So of course this will make more sense once I actually show you. But what this means is none is it's skipping over page nine through 12 because you don't wanna show every link. So now what I'll do is I'll get into actually writing the code so this is all more clear because I know looking at the REPL is pretty boring. So what I'll do here is I will create a route and I'll call this thread. So with this route, what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept a page number. So it's going to be an integer and I'll call the variable page number and I have to supply the argument here. So page num. And then what I'll do is I'll query for the threads. So in the same way I just did on the rebel thread.query paginate and then per page, 
I'll leave it as a default. So per page is 20 and the page num will be assigned to the page parameter. So just like that. So page num is passed in and then error out will be true. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. And I'm going to return the template index, which I already have created. And I'll show you that in a moment. So threads, threads. So let me show you the template. It's very straightforward. It is just a bootstrap CSS file or bootstrap HTML file. And I have these two alerts that I'm going to use to represent the threads. And I have two links here that will represent the pagination links. So I'll go ahead and start the app. And then let's take a look at what happens. So if I go to threads and then I have to supply a page number, so let's say one, it gives me a 404 not found because there should be no S there. So thread, okay, so I see the template. It doesn't do anything yet because I haven't added anything in the template other than the default HTML. But what I'm going to do is I'll change this to be the thread title. So to start with that, what I'll do is instead of having two here, I'm going to loop over items in the pagination object. So for thread in threads.items, I'm going to in the loop down here. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to show the thread title for each item in the threads pagination object. So I'll save this and if I run it again, I should see 20 things here. So I see thread one at the top, and if I scroll down, I see thread 20. So now let me modify this a little bit to be per page, let's say per page five. So now if I run this again, I see just five items. And if I change the page number through the URL, so let's say page six, then I see thread 26 through 30. So that's fairly straightforward. As you can see, as long as I have a starting page and the number of items in a page, I can choose what I want to display here. And now this error out, what this means is if I, if I try to go to a page that doesn't exist, so let's say page 600, then I get a 404 error. If I set this to false, what happens is instead of getting a 404 error, it will just keep going, but there will be nothing in that threads variable to loop over, so nothing gets returned. So you see there's nothing there. If I go to page six again, then I see all the items there. So error out would be true if you wanted to 404 if the page doesn't exist and false if you just wanted to display nothing. It just depends on your app. The default is true. So now what I'll do is I'll create these links down here for the actual pages. So I'll be able to click on these links and go to different pages instead of writing it in the URL. And it turns out to be very simple. So what I'll do is in the template here, I'll create a second loop. And this loop is going to be for page in threads dot either pages. And then I'll end the loop underneath. So in for. And let me indent this a little bit so it's a little more clear. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to say that if the page actually exists, so remember on the REPL we saw none. None represents the pages that won't show up in the links. So if it's none, that means it's not going to show up. So you have to have a if statement to check if it actually exists. So if page, what I'll do is I'll have the link and if the page doesn't exist, so if it's none, then I can put something else. In this case, I'll put an ellipsis. So else, and then just three dots. All right, so I can remove one of the links because it's going to be looped over. And now what I'll do is I'll simply put the page number here. So I'll substitute the variable page. Now when we take a look at this, you can see the links down here. So I'm on page six, so it gives me all the links around page six, and it also gives me the first two for one and two, and then the last two, 39 and 40. And if I want to actually make those links, then what I can do is add a URL for here. So URL for, 
and then the endpoint is going to be thread and the variable is going to be the page. So remember page is just a number. So now if I run this, these become links. So if I click 10, I'm on page 10 now. If I click 14, I'm on page 14, 39. And you can see the links changing now here. Let me make it a little bigger. You can see the links are changing every time I switch pages. So I'm on page two, page six, page nine, and these are changing. So the last thing I'll show you is what is in the documentation here for IDER pages. There's left edge, left current, right current, and right edge. So left edge means how many show up on the left. So if I change left edge to be say five, then I should see the first five items. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six isn't there, but then seven because I'm around page seven. So let me just change that to three so there won't be so many. Right edge is analogous, so I can have four. So that would show me the last four instead of just the last two. So now I see 37, 38, 39, and 40. Okay, so that's straightforward. And then the last two things are left current and right current. Defaults are two for left current and five for right current. Well, what that means is how many to the left and right of the current page do you wanna see? So right now, I'm on page nine, so it shows me page seven and page eight. So two to the left of the current page. So if I change that to three, so left current is three, I should see six, seven, eight, and then nine for the current page. So now I see six, seven, eight, and nine. And likewise with right current, it just tells me how many uh, from the right. So it includes the current page. So one, two, three, four, five. If I change this to three, then it should give me nine, 10, and 11. So right current is three. So if I do this again, I should see nine, 10, 11, and then the ellipses. So 9, 10, 11, ellipses, and then the last three. So as you can see, IDER pages is just as straightforward as everything else. So I'm pretty sure if you use Flash SQL Alchemy, you can get a lot of use from the pagination object in your app because chances are you don't want to return all the results at once when you get, say, hundreds of results potentially. If you have something that returns like 10 or 20, maybe you can put them all on one page. But it's, once your data set grows bigger and bigger, you don't want to show everything on a single page at once. So that's when you use a paginate object. And just remember that this paginate is kind of analogous to calling all or one in the sense that it executes the query. The only difference here is instead of returning the, ob the result objects directly, it returns the pagination object and then you can get the results inside of that pagination object. So that's all I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't been to my website already, I have more in-depth courses on Flask. So if you want to learn Flask more in-depth instead of just like one-off videos like this, then go to prettyprinted.com. There's a link in the description below for that as well. Um, they're sequential, so each video builds on each other, unlike what's on my YouTube channel. And that's it. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching this video. And I will talk to you next time.